Hi there, Stefan. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, good. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and uh, being here for my interview. So I, I heard about a lot about uh, what you are doing about the refugees and also about the kind of, I can say, an organization that you are leading. So can you tell at the first uh, or at, at the first introduce yourself and then uh, tell something about your organization? Sure. My name is Stephen Watt, and I have a volunteer-led organization called Northern Lights Canada, which is a uh, not-for-profit uh, established about a year ago on, officially. And uh, it is uh, the purpose of Northern Lights Canada is to promote uh, awareness of refugees here in Canada and sometimes abroad, and also to uh, promote resettlement of refugees, especially here in Canada, and especially through the private sponsorship program. Wonderful. So I am going to ask you some question, like what made you start Northern Lights Canada? And why do you want to help uh, refugees or other people in need? Sure. Northern Lights Canada it, it comes out of work, uh, volunteer work that myself and many other people have been doing uh, in especially here in Toronto, uh, for years. And some of those people you know, uh, like Marcella, uh, we have been um, initially uh, helping Syrian refugees back in 2016, uh, 2015, 2016. And from that work, uh, you know, we established quite a, a good, strong network here in Toronto and, and increasingly in other cities of uh, people who uh, care about refugees, want to sponsor refugees. And, um, and then, you know, since we've been doing this for a while, our network now includes people who were once refugees, but are now what we call newcomers here in Canada. So it's, it's a pretty robust network. And at one point, uh, a friend of mine, one of the co-founders said, you really need to formalize this. You need to have a website. You need to have a, you know, organizational presence. I wasn't convinced at the time because I, I'm not, um, somebody leans towards organizations and formal formal structures and so on but uh, i took his advice he he is a newcomer himself um but he has a lot of experience in this in this work and uh you know created a website and and applied for not-for-profit status and so on formalized and i really see the benefit of it uh to be honest it really uh creates credibility uh with you know government and and other organizations um and I feel like it's expanded our, our reach and our ability to help people from coast to coast. Wow, it's amazing. It's, it's an amazing work that you, are do, that you are doing to help people in need, especially the refugees in another country. Uh, so you mentioned about the refugee word. Can you explain to me or tell to me what does the word refugee mean to you? The word refugee is one of those words that uh, takes on all sorts of connotations, depending on who's using it. Um, you know, it can bring up mental images of people lining up in, with boxes of possessions, trying to get into a country or living in tents. And, and one of the things that I do try to do in you know, through my volunteer work is to educate what refugee means um, so that people, you know, don't just go with their base connotations. Um, it, it, refugee is anybody who uh, s seeks refuge, you know, ultimately the word is refuge and refuge is a very positive word, but somehow refugee is not, which just is one of those things, I guess. Uh, if, you, if you have to leave your home and seek refuge, that means you're seeking safety, you're seeking, uh, you're, you're running from something, which is often quite terrible and going somewhere else for safety, or, or help or security. And that's the meaning of refu refugee. Um, the kind of legal meaning is somebody who's left their country typically. I mean, there's internal, internally displaced people. And, but if, if you wanna qualify as a quote unquote refugee, you're typically outside your country. Um, and then, you know, to, there's all sorts of paperwork that says, yes, you are indeed a refugee. But for me, it's just anybody who had to leave because of, uh persecution or or you know environmental catastrophe or uh war you know there's many reasons uh the key thing to know is nobody wants to be a refugee 
this is something that is very basic and obvious, but people sometimes don't know that they think, you know, oh, look at all these refugees. It's like, do you think anyone wants to leave their home? Like, uh, having a home is one of those very basic human needs and uh, nobody wants to leave their home unless something is really, really bad. Um, there is uh, somebody I know posted something about, you know, you can't go home if, if home is in the mouth of a shark. And, and that's, that's often like, that's a case of every refugee I've ever known. They would much rather be home, but they can't because uh, their lives are in danger or things are just so bad that they have to go and just sort of seek, you know, throw themselves into the arms of a, of another country, which they often don't know anything about, uh, because that's their only option. That's what oh, being a refugee wow. is. What a wonderful explanation and what an amazing job you are doing. It's really inspired me and I hope uh, you can find more people to support you to help those people in need. So I know everything has problems and there is so many challenges in the way of helping someone. It's not an easy work. Um, I'm, I would like to know what challenge do you currently face uh, bringing uh, refugees to Canada? What's the main thing that you face? And it, it's a very big challenge for you. you know, the biggest challenge is I think there's something like 80 million refugees in the world. It's a global crisis. It's a huge crisis. And um, Canada likes to make a lot of show about uh, helping refugees, but we actually don't take in that many, in part because we don't have, uh, you know, countries around us that are refugee producing. Uh, so we have this natural adva advantage of, um, you know, surrounded on three of our four sides with oceans. Um, and, and, you know, U.S. is on the southern border. So we don't get waves of refugees like other countries like Europe and Pakistan and, you know, pretty much the rest of the world, uh, which allows us to be very picky about who gets in here and very controlling. And our numbers are actually not that great, to be honest. Like, if you remember, um, maybe you don't, but in 2015-16, our prime minister, Justin Trudeau, would made, you know, was showing up at airports and getting covered by the media welcoming Syrian refugees. I think they welcomed 45,000 in four months, which is a lot by Canadian standards. But in the, that same year, Germany took in something like 800,000. And they have, I think, twice our population, but they were taking in a magnitude of like 20 times what we took in. So um, I, one of my wishes is that Canada would take in a lot more. Uh, refugees, uh, when they have this sort of support that Canada gives, tend to do very well. Um, and I don't think there's a real line between sort of economic migrants and people who come as refugees are often the same people, uh, same. Uh, and in fact, the, the newcomers I know who were refugees, uh, if anything, like they uh, achieve at a rate that's just unbelievable because often there's just so much pent up to, uh, need in them to do in themselves to do something. They've spent eight to 10 years uh, not being able to work, go to school, do anything. Um, and so when they come to Canada, especially if they have support of Canadians, which happens in the private sponsorship program, uh, they tend to just take off and do very, very well. And since Canada is a country that needs to, bring, to import people, <laughs> largely because of our declining birth rate, our, our economic growth is almost entirely attributable to newcomers. Uh, so we're a country that needs newcomers. And uh, I wish Canada would lower the barriers and recognize that refugees are uh, just, you know, a, a wonderful source of uh, Canadian talent and uh, contribution to our economy. Um, yeah, that's the economic argument. The, 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 the uh, emotional argument is helping somebody is a, a very wonderful experience. And I would encourage anybody who can to become a private sponsor to sort of be part of that journey. It's it's the greatest thing you could do, except maybe have a child <laughs> who goes to university or something. If it, you know, it's like got to be a number two to that. Yeah. yeah, I hope like you can find and also other people come together to support you because you are really helping people, and you are not just helping; you are giving a hope uh, to start and build a new future for yourself. 
So besides all the question, I want to ask you what part brings you the most joy when you are helping refugees and when they are coming and, and starting to build a new future in a new country like here in Canada? What, what's that part that you really enjoy? Uh, I enjoy just being there for, for those moments. I mean, the, the airport welcome thing is beautiful. Uh, it's one of the most beautiful things um, when you welcome somebody into a country and they, and they come in, through private sponsorship as permanent residents. So they're never refugees in Canada. They're, uh, they come as permanent residents. And so the kind of dig, feeling of dignity and belonging that they have been missing for years and years and years um, is, is given to them right at the airport. So that's that's a beautiful moment. And then every milestone along the way, like, you know, first Canadian ID, first Canadian bank account, uh, first school, first job, uh, these things tend to happen really fast. And every milestone is very significant. Like I didn't I didn't used to understand why people got so excited by getting their G license, like G1. It's like <laughs> you don't have a car. Who cares? But I, I've now realized uh, it's every piece of ID is just another milestone telling them that they're part of this country and mm -hmm. like official proof of that. And it's very beautiful. And, and, you know, non-symbolic milestones, like first apartment, first uh, job and so on are also amazing. And then seeing people establish their own networks and their own lives, which happens very fast. Um, yeah. It's all beautiful. Wow. It's wonderful. <laughs> I really inspired by what you are doing to help refugees. I hope that by sharing the stories and awareness of the people, people come together and help uh, refugees and help you, support you to help those people in other country who needs, who needs help and they are homeless or they want to come and have a peaceful life here in Canada. Um, thank you so much for your time and um, being interviewed by me. I hope I can talk to you and see you very soon. Thank me too. Thank you.